back to Jamaica's most hedonistic resort. No sweet sex in at times as well. Good morning, everybody. For more eager Brits in the sun. I'm not so crazy now, am I? The new series continues. Pleasure Island, Tuesday 10 on ITV. From Pop Princess to Soap Sensation. You're Diane Murray, aren't you, from Brookside? And you're one of the Nolans. In-house soap secrets revealed. My sisters couldn't believe it when I got the role. From wannabe rock star to an artist in every shape of the word. My paint was just my hobby. Every soap has its secrets. Wednesday at 8. On the way next, the latest ITV nightly news with Dermot Murnahan. <laughs> going to NatWest, you can also use the internet to make NatWest come to you. Visit us at natwest.com. Something missing? Whatever you're looking for on the internet, Lycos retrieves it. Lycos goes to extraordinary lengths to dig up exactly what you need. Lycos, your personal internet guide. Lycos.co.uk You know, the Scoot website is one of the most popular in the UK. It gives you all the details you need on a business, even a local map. Uh, second left, please. Mr. Purplehead, can you move your head so I can see where I'm going? Move to the left a bit. Like this? Right. Over here? Oh, forget it. Nothing to report. Day 96. Nothing to report. Day 210. Still nothing to report. Something to report. Dr. Harris has been replaced. Victory is ours! <laughs> connect with Sony and you connect with a whole new world. Zoe, it's Jamie. Look, I'm knocking up a nice bit of fish tonight. That's lovely, mate. Lovely job, Lee. Thank you very much. Uh, do you fancy coming round for some tucker? Oh, it sounds lovely, darling. Unfortunately, we're away this weekend. We're at the cottage in Scotland. Scotland? Lovely. Get us a haggis. Welcome to your world. From one to one. Chocolate. To keep Tesco prices permanently low, we've made cuts on over 100 frozen food products. Vanilla. Like Tesco two-litre soft scoop ice cream. I think we've got quite enough ice cream now, Mother. Mm. Oh, raspberry! <laughs> Tesco. Every little home. This week, we're giving away one million free Thunderball tickets to National Lottery game players. Just walk into one of these, give your National Lottery game play slip to this man, and if you hear this sound, you'll get one of these free. So remember, just listen out for this sound. Consumer tests show it outperforms the world's best-selling wrinkle cream. And mirrors show it reduces the appearance of wrinkles in under 14 days. Garnier Synergy Wrinkle This Day. Are you ready for real fear? I sat on my friend's lap. Really scary, definitely. Made me jump. Best film I've seen this year. Tell me, am I going to die? <laughs> Final destination. I can't count how many times I jumped. It's a top film. Brilliant. I've never seen anything like it. Final destination. Just think they're still on the beach. It must be easy way to earn a living. The staff of Palmer Airport versus a mountain of passengers in a new holiday airport, Monday at 9, ITV. Can dissolved government return to Northern Ireland? Martin McGuinness will be interviewed by Jonathan Dimbleby this Sunday at 1 o'clock, right here on LWT. 
dramatic escape by British soldiers in Sierra Leone. The Susie Lamplu murder inquiry, new clues, 14 years on. How Viagra helped infertile British woman to get pregnant. And family fortunes, one of the world's biggest lottery wins. From ITN, the ITV Nightly News with Dermot Murnahan. Good evening. Three British officers and a New Zealander today described their escape from rebel forces of the Revolutionary United Front in Sierra Leone who threatened to kill them. They were serving as military observers with a Kenyan detachment of UN peacekeepers in the interior when things got too hot for comfort. They went over the compound wall and trekked 50 miles through the bush, dodging rebel patrols to safety. It took days. Our foreign affairs editor Robert Moore met them today. Amid the UN crisis here, the story has emerged of the remarkable escape from behind rebel lines of four unarmed UN military observers who were caught up in heavy fighting and then spent three days and nights in the bush evading capture. Major Philip Ashby, a Royal Marine commando, led the escape amid fears the rebels would massacre his men. It was very intimidating. The RUF uh, past masters at uh, psychological warfare, which basically means uh, frightening their enemy into giving up and certainly uh, guys who we knew were in the RUF were coming up to us during the day uh, to, the, to the perimeter of the compound, uh, some of them wearing United Nations uh, uniforms which they'd captured off other troops and saying, I've just killed the guy who was wearing this uniform, in 15 minutes we're coming to do the same to you. He also paid tribute to the extraordinary bravery of the pockets of isolated UN peacekeepers who are now still surviving behind rebel lines. Even before we escaped, a number of Kenyans who'd been uh, attacked in a different location had managed to escape and evade back to the compound in which we were, including two guys, one of whom had a bullet wound through his upper, upper thigh and a, a large parts of his right arm missing where he'd been hit by, by a bazooka. As they struggled through Sierra Leone's dense bush, the batteries on their satellite phone failed, although he'd already told his wife of his planned bid for freedom. They also suffered from severe dehydration and from hallucinations. But that survival story still leaves hundreds of UN personnel missing and a battlefield picture that remains highly confused. Government forces are now desperately seeking to regain the initiative, pushing back the rebel advance about a mile away from here. The UN are acting in assistance, rapidly deploying a fresh wave of Jordanian reinforcements. With help from the RAF, those Jordanian troops are now on the ground, while the UN are left to hope for the safety of those peacekeepers in rebel hands. Robert Moore, ITN, in Sierra Leone. Police today relaunched their inquiry into the disappearance of the estate agent Susie Lamplu back in 1986. They said a key witness had emerged and they had a very tight core of suspects. Shuli Ghosh reports. For 14 years, Paul and Diana Lamplu have searched for the truth about what happened to their daughter. Now police are relaunching their investigation with a new witness who saw Susie on the day she disappeared. I believe it is most relevant, in fact highly relevant, and I do genuinely believe there are others out there, not just witnesses on the day, but people who know the suspect. The young estate agent sparked a nationwide search when she vanished in 1986. She'd gone to show a house to a client called Mr. Kipper. Her body was never found, but police believe she is dead. Old evidence is now being re-examined. Samples taken from Susie's car at the time are now being tested using the latest DNA techniques. For Susie's parents, the hardest part has been accepting their daughter was murdered. You wait for Susie because then you really, in a way, see the disappearance, that she might just come around the corner. And you have to accept that now about the abduction and the murder and really quite awful tonight detectives are concentrating on a core group of suspects some of whom haven't been considered before officers say the net is closing in on the killer shooty gosh itn scotland yard the ruling council of the ulster unionist party is to meet a week tomorrow about the ira's latest arms offer and about going back to power sharing with the republicans the party leader, David Trimble, said today he still didn't know what he would be recommending. Here's John Draper. 
After a day of uncertainty, the unionists emerged to announce that their 800-strong ruling council will meet next weekend to vote on the IRA's weapons initiative. The meeting will effectively decide whether the power-sharing executive will be restored at Stormont this month. But David Trimble had this note of caution. I must make it absolutely clear at this stage that the calling of the meeting does not mean that we have committed ourselves to endorse any set of proposals. I have yet to formulate what proposals will be put to the Council. That remark refers to the fact that it's not just the IRA's commitment to peace the Unionists will vote on, they're also fiercely opposed to plans to drop the name of the Royal Ulster Constabulary. Nationalists insist the name change must come as part of police reform, and Gerry Adams says there must be no backtracking on the RUC to placate Unionists. Concession to Unionism on the RUC or on patent or any other touchstone issue could undermine entirely the initiative. Ministers are relieved that the Unionist Council meeting will go ahead, but it's by no means certain that there'll be the yes vote required to restore the power-sharing executive. John Draper, ITN, Westminster. A childless London woman treated with the male anti-impotence drug Viagra has become pregnant in a medical first in Britain. In her mid-30s, she'd been trying to conceive for more than five years. Lawrence McGinty has the full story. The little blue tablets that offer new hope for millions of impotent men are now helping at least some women to overcome their infertility problems too. Dr. Mohamed Taraniti has treated three women with Viagra and now one of them is pregnant. His colleagues in America have treated four patients. Three became pregnant. So far, not enough to say for sure that the drug really works. It's very early days and as I said, it's, it's very difficult to draw a conclusion based on one case. But it is something that needs to be looked at and hopefully given enough time and enough patience we may be able to be in a better position to say yes it's definitely a breakthrough or maybe it's uh, it's it's not as good as what we think it is some women can't get pregnant because the lining of their womb is too thin to support the developing fetus viagra could help because it increases blood supply but women would have to risk the known side effects of heart attacks about 1 in 10 or 1 in 20 of Mr. Taraniti's patients have problems that could be helped by treatment with Viagra. He hopes other clinics will start using the drug so doctors can really tell whether it works or whether this unnamed patient was just very lucky indeed. Lawrence McGinty, ITN, in central London. A forest fire in New Mexico came within yards of a nuclear weapons research laboratory today before it was brought under control by firefighters. The blaze, which was started by the National Park Service to clear brushwood, destroyed hundreds of houses in Los Alamos. Thousands fled the town before the flames started to die down when the wind changed direction. Ford confirmed today that it's closing its car assembly line at Dagenham, though it's putting new investment into the engine plant there. The company said net job losses would be 1,400. The unions are now talking about strikes. Adrian Britton reports. The speculation finally over. 1,900 jobs will go at Dagenham, and tonight workers felt angry and betrayed. This time last year we were bees knees, and now of course we're a poor relation. It's an absolute disgrace. There's people in that town who are very emotional today, and they very feel hurt, let down. But Ford says it's making more cars than it can sell, and that it's no longer viable to continue production at Dagenham. Not taking this very difficult and tough decision would have jeopardized Ford, Ford's European investment. There is some consolation. Dagenham will become Ford's base for building diesel engines, creating 500 new jobs. Unions who will meet workers here on Monday are not ruling out the possibility of strike action. They say Dagenham has been singled out by Ford because it's an easy target. Labour laws are so slack, so lax. We're quick, cheap and easy to sack. A sign put up by workers, a cynical reference to BMW's £10 sale of Rover. Though unlike Longbridge, this plant is witnessing the end of an era. Adrian Britton, ITN, Dagenham. A million American mothers are expected to go on the march on Sunday for stricter controls on guns, which kill an extraordinary number of American children. Joining the biggest demo in Washington will be some mothers from Dunblane. ITN's Terry Lloyd reports. <laughs> The Dunblane mothers travel to America to share their grief in a country where 12 children die from gunshot wounds each day. 
America, like Dunblane, has suffered. 15 died at the Columbine High School in Colorado when a gunman opened fire. Good morning, Million Mile Mark. These mothers all lost five-year-old daughters in the Dunblane massacre. They helped change gun laws in Britain. Now they hope it works in America. And when we started campaigning, it was because we didn't want our children's death to be in vain. We wanted to, something positive, something good to have come out of that. Put politics aside. But in America, the entire gun issue is being used as political ammunition. The influential National Rifle Association versus the gun control lobby in an advertising showdown. The president, who's backing Sunday's march, met a cross-section of American mothers on live television today and soon became one side's target. You said, let's forget the crimes. And let's no. no, 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 sir. Excuse me. This is Excuse the way the NRA operates. No, sir, it's not. <laughs> the Dunblane mothers will march to Capitol Hill with hundreds of thousands of other parents all hoping for gun control. And with them will be the president's wife, Hillary Clinton. Terry Lloyd, ITN, Washington. Now sport, and Kevin Keegan let it be known today that whatever a newspaper made of a remark of his, his England squad will be practicing penalty kicks this summer. As well they might, given England's wretched experience in two World Cup competitions and in Euro 96. Here's Peter Staunton. After 10 years of failed shootouts, the great penalty debate has been reopened just two months before Euro 2000. Should Kevin Keegan force his players to take repeated spot kicks during training? So when it comes to the real thing, they'll be less likely to lose their nerve. The coach's long-held view is that they should practice, although the real test of a penalty taker is holding his nerve when the pressure is really on. And plenty of England's finest have failed that test over the past 10 years. This morning, though, Keegan was astonished when he read a back-page headline above a story which claimed he wouldn't even bother with penalty practice. Not true, responded the Football Association this afternoon in language which reopened the war of words between the national coach and the tabloid press. Could it be that tension is rising? Yes, it is. But what is unfair and unreasonable, particularly unfair to our players and our chances of success in Euro 2000, is that complete nonsense like this is written that, yes, can hold people up to ridicule. Not that Keegan himself is immune from the odd verbal miss. You're back into score quickly, yes or no? Yes. Peter Staunton, ITN Sport. Domestic football and Wimbledon and Bradford are preparing for the matches which will decide whether they stay in the Premiership. On Sunday, one of them will definitely be relegated. But Wimbledon train today knowing a win at Southampton will keep them in the top division. But if they lose, then Bradford, who take on Liverpool, have a real chance of survival. The winner of half of the biggest lottery prize in American history, $363 million, was identified today. He turned out to be a Michigan swimming pool installer who bought his ticket with a change for a hot dog. Andrew Simmons heard what he wants to do now. He's followed the American work ethic all of his life, up to 100 hours a week, no summer holiday for 13 years, and today Larry Ross stood with his wife of 25 years and three children to take the paycheck of a lifetime. Their share, which is $181,500,000. Right. In pounds sterling, that's more than $120 million. And all because when Larry stopped at this restaurant to buy a hot dog, he only had a $100 bill to pay for it. His wife, Nancy, persuaded him to take the change in lottery tickets. And then his luck rolled in with a half share of the biggest American lottery jackpot ever. Welcome to the big game. And good evening, everybody. I'm Glenn Burns. We're just happy. We're glad. We're really humbled. We, we, we're happy for all those. We're happy everybody bought tickets. <laughs> and we wish that everybody else could win and feel the same way we do. Uh, it's, it, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. Now America's on the lookout for who's won the other half of the $363 million jackpot. Tonight it still remains unclaimed. Andrew Simmons, ITS. The main headline again, three British officers have been describing their escape from rebel forces in Sierra Leone. Tonight, financial figures and the FTSE 100 share index closed up almost 38 points at its highest for more than a week. On Wall Street, the Dow rose 63 points. And for a change, the pound was up against the dollar by just over a cent. And now it's time for a preview of tomorrow morning's pages, front pages. <laughs> And The Guardian reports that British troops are preparing for an assault on the revolutionary United Front in Sierra Leone, describing it as a dramatic change of strategy. 
The Telegraph also leads on Sierra Leone, saying there's growing concern that Britain is being drawn into a long-term war. This is one of the soldiers who trekked to freedom. The Times has a campaign to bring back News at 10. It says former newsreader Sir Alistair Burnett and others have appealed for its return. It features the actress Lenny Zellweger, who's to play Bridget Jones in a film version of the best-selling book. The Daily Mail says the BBC has been accused of being arrogant and out of touch over its decision not to provide live coverage of the Queen Mother's birthday pageant. And The Sun also has news of the Queen Mother's 100th birthday celebrations and opportunities for people to attend special events. And that's the end of this Friday's and this week's ITV Nightly News. I'll be back on Monday at 11. From the entire team, good night. Hello, good evening. Not a bad weekend on balance, dry for much of the time and mild too, but viewers in Northern Ireland will probably find it disappointing. They've had a glorious week, hardly a cloud in the sky, but as the weekend approaches, the weather in the west will turn more and more unsettled. There's today's satellite picture. You can see the northern half of Britain had a fine day today, hardly any cloud at all. The south and the east, we've had some more clouds, some showery outbreaks of rain, and they're going to drift slowly north tonight. And the reason we've had fine weather in the north over the last few days is because we've had this high pressure close by. You can see by Saturday, by tomorrow, it begins to drift away, allowing this next weather system to approach. And that comes along for western parts of Britain during Sunday. So tomorrow is the best part of the weekend if you live in the west. You'll have some rain on Sunday. Now coming back to tonight, we've had those patches of rain across the south today. They're drifting further north and west. The odd shower coming into Northern Ireland, maybe western Scotland too eventually. But the showers are becoming lighter and more patchy all the time. And it's a mild night for us all. A grey start for many tomorrow, but misty in places too. But as the skies brighten up and the sunshine gets to work, it will warm up, but will set off a few showers as well, particularly in central and southwestern parts, the chance of the odd heavy one there. And late in the day, this next weather front just coming onto the scene. The temperatures tomorrow, pretty mild, I think, by May standards even, 20, 21, that gets into the 70s Fahrenheit. And then Sunday, well, that weather front will come on the scene. Central and eastern parts will stay dry for most of the day and quite warm too with some sunshine. But in the west, as the weather front makes its way in, we find showery outbreaks of rain across Ireland and then many other western parts of Britain during the day. Have a good weekend. Power Gen. Power, whatever the weather.